the interview. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. Nice to see you, sir. What do you know, Jeff? Nice to see you, for it's sure. It's always a pleasure. We don't get across the street enough That's to say That's right. Hi. We're a long ways away, just yeah. clear across the street. Well, I'm glad you stopped by for a visit. And Good we have here. a few things that we want to talk about today and share with the folks about you and your career and what you're doing here in town. So, uh, first of all, uh, most people probably have a pretty good idea, but uh, what is your position and such? I'm the City Administrator Community Development Director. When I started with the City, I was the first Community Development Director. As time progressed in 2002, I became the Assistant City Administrator, and when Jim Zarling decided to retire in 2012, um, told the council maybe I should do both jobs so we don't have to hire another person, sure. save some money. So I stayed um, community development director, city administrator, much like Jim Zarling was finance director, city administrator, saved the city some money. Very cool. So what is a little bit of your background? Where are you from and your family? And my background is both my wife and I are from Omaha, Nebraska. We have two children. They'll be 28 and 27. This summer, um, my first job out of college was with the Metropolitan Area Planning Agency, a lot like what people would look at in the cities as the Met Council. Okay. On the way over here, I was thinking to myself that um, 2020 is coming up. Wow. Well, when I started with the Metropolitan Area Planning Agency, they were doing their Omaha Transportation Plan 2020. And I thought, that's a long way out. <laughs> that's right. That's Not anymore. <laughs> I just sent the council out, uh, or I will be sending the city council out a, a budget memo and for 2020. Wow. So Doesn't seem possible, that does it? That ages myself a little <laughs> bit, right. I think. And what year did you move to town? Mary and I moved to town in 1995. Mary and I and Jake and Libby. Very cool. Very cool. They were three and four. And as I said, they'll be 28 and 27. Wow, so. time does pass, doesn't yeah, it? It does. It flies. How did you come to Fairmont originally? I was looking to kind of change things up in my career with the planning agency. I was kind of pigeonholed in grant writing, that sort of thing. And But I did a lot of what they call circuit writing. We were a five county, 35 city agency. And so I would go out and do various planning and economic development okay. and uh, personnel policies, ordinance writing for these smaller cities. And um, a headhunter called one day, Jim Bremmeyer, still is in Minnesota, still does some um, uh, recruitment work, executive recruitment work. Mary and I were looking for a change. We've always liked, uh, our, one of our goals was to be around lakes. We always sure. liked the water and boating, and this opportunity came up. Your original position that you were just sharing a little bit about, what were your responsibilities at that time? At that time, the, the city council had, and the economic development group had created the community development director position. So my, my charges were community development, the okay. building official and planning and zoning and that sort of thing. Housing, working with the HRA and housing across uh, the city and economic development. And as you know, there's been a television show in Fairmont for over 25 years altogether. There has been. And I think you've been on that show, uh, Hometown Focus. Right. With Janet Ruth. With, no, and with, with uh, Al, Al, Al Travis. Travis. And you and Jim were talking to Al Travis, Travis at that time about what was happening. And surprise, surprise, I got the footage right here. Do you want to see it? Perfect, yeah, yeah. let's look at let's it. Let's take a look. This is Focus on Fairmont. I'm uh, here with uh, Jim Zarling, Fairmont uh, City Administrator. And sitting down with us now, Mike Humpel, Community Development Director for the City of Fairmont. Uh, thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Good to be here, Al. We're talking about the city coming up with their three goals. Uh, the City Council, the first one, water quality issues. The second one, updating our land use maps and reviewing the city's comprehensive plan. Sounds good. What does it mean? Well, I think for a city to grow and, and um, know where they're going, we have to decide where we've been, where we want to go, and how's our city growing. What we want to do is plan for the community's future with the citizens involved. So we put together a 22-member citizen panel along with the Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals, and we're going to look at 
what where we're going to grow in the next few years. What you're talking about is like where the uh, uh, everything business from, district is going to be, right. where the new homes are coming in, and that sort of thing. Right. Where where do we think our industrial areas should be? Um, where is it proven we've seen most of our residential growth? You know, we, we build an average of 12 houses a year, so it's not huge growth. It's not big subdivisions, but but planning for that and and having it on paper and recognizing that it's not a stagnant document, that it should change over time as markets change and that sort of thing. Now, you supply us with a bunch of statistics, and we've got a few of them, and i got to think this is the sort of thing you use to plan out what's going One on. One of the, the things, future. and a lot of these statistics come from see if we can get a, a, uh, a housing study we had completed. One of the things you want to look at is what's our population doing? You see it um, dropped from 19, an all-time high in 1980 to 1990, but we're on our way back with the 94 estimates, and, um, and, and we're hoping to grow about 1 or 2 percent over the next census, which is 10 years. Um, how do you get to these numbers? I, the, the projected is 11.9, the most ever then would be in the city right. of Fairmont by the 2020. We, we used three different, we had a consultant do our housing study, and they used a company called Claritas. It's a, a data company that reviews census. We had the state demographer and then census. Past trends, what's happening, what happened from 70 to 80, 80 to 90, and probably most important for Fairmont, what's happening between 1990 and 1994. Had a few bad years. The, um, rural America had some bad years from 80 to 85 in there. Uh, the 80s were tough on populations, a lot of out-migration. Sure. I think we're seeing some of that coming back. Data is a little different in Fairmont where we might be losing population in the county overall, but a lot of county residents moving into Fairmont, so you're going to see Fairmont's... Um, and I think we have some stats on just some of that. Let's see what they've got uh, up next. We've taken out some interesting things. The medium income in a family in Fairmont, 35. Uh, Minnesota medium income, 36,000. Right. Um, we were obviously a little low. A little low for on a state if we compare to a statewide average. But if you look at uh, communities around us, Worthington, Bemidji, Marshall, Fergus Falls, where we have a medium income of 30,068, 30, which is only less than Marshall at 32,560. So comparatively, Fairmont's doing very well. Okay, and we've got some more stats again that uh, we found interesting. Uh, number of houses per year, you brought that up. Build 12, and I think what's important here is they're averaging about 132,000 a unit, excluding lot. But our average house is between fifty-seven and sixty-five thousand dollars, and if you have a home, your property tax for school district, county, and city would be about seven hundred and sixty-five dollars, which is ranks ninety-six out of one hundred and twenty-five out-state communities. And that's where, you, when you start comparing us with others, it really takes a, and gives you a shot. Sure. We have very low property taxes, and then uh, I think this was a number I, I read and was really shocked by the sales and use taxes, the amount of money that flowed from one person to another in our city. Three hundred sixteen million dollars uh, plus, almost three seventeen. That's a that to me was a remarkably large number, and it's it's disproportionate for the county. Do we have three quarters of the county people oh, here? Oh, yeah, we have uh, uh, just over fifty percent. Fifty percent of the county live in Fairmont, but we get almost three quarters of the revenue right. that takes place. If you look at the number of businesses, five hundred and thirty three businesses in Fairmont. Okay. So, and, and those all seem to be very positive numbers if we're getting right. that much of out of our county and we seem to be growing. That's all good things. Uh, third goal you're supposed to be taking a look at, uh, beautifying the city. What are some of the things you're looking to do? In the, in I think that? one of the, that, sit, that issue arose from looking at our, our entrance ramps our, from the Interstate 90 into our community. How can we make them as attractive as possible to, to show people we're not just another interstate community, that we have beautiful lakes. Um, coming in on Lake Avenue has always been a bone of contention for people. And as long as you bring that up, when we've got some a video of some of this cleanup we're talking sure. about. Please continue on, and we'll let that um, roll. So I think looking at working with area businesses out there just to uh, make the situation look a little nicer, a little, attract, a little more attractive. Um, we don't want to just not only in Lake Avenue, but all parts of our community. And sometimes that 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 takes some some demolition to um, get to where you want to go. I think a great example has been um, the Welkin Hotel site yep. on Blue Earth and and 15, where it's torn down and regraded, um, redevelopment. And Fairmont has a history of doing a lot of good things with its redevelopment. 
um, banks downtown, um, where City Hall's at now, good use of our TIF dollars, and, and a good, you know, we're, we're beautifying the community. And we can say thank to Steve Frick, he's the one running the bulldozer, came out to uh, give us some of that footage. Uh, if you haven't noticed, that is uh, Fairmont Cable TV's backyard. We're cleaning it up as a, an example to show that these are the things pre people sure. can do. Now that was a great interview. Well, I hope I'm a little more <laughs> polished than I was back then. But well, you, you, uh, I look the same, right? <laughs> you look exactly the same. Good sure, job. Sure, sure I do. You know, there are a couple things that were discussed in that interview at that time, one of which is income, and the average income in Fairmont being about 30000 I think they you said 30500 uh, Any idea what it is now? You know, I think our, our average or median income is somewhere above fifty. 55, okay. somewhere in there. And as back in 1995, if you compare us across the state, you know, we're probably a little low. But if you compare us with other like sized cities out in outstate Minnesota, we're probably right in there, right, okay. right, in, right in the middle. Awesome. And you talked about taxes and property, property taxes. tax and such. Uh, what has happened with that? Back in 1995, we were 96th of 125 cities. Um, today, we're just using, I think, four, 14 or 20 cities. We're about somewhere between the third and the fifth for the lowest. Um, over the last couple of years, we've had some major capital improvement things that we needed to do. So um, we had one year where our levy increased 12 percent and our um, another year it was 9.3 percent. So there was, those were a couple of big years that moved us up. But what I want to say is, well, our levies increase, a 12% levy increase doesn't mean that your taxes are going up 12% because what we've seen is an offset in our overall market value of our sure, community. Sure, sure. So we're and still low. We're still a bargain. And as I have one council member remind me, Mike, don't brag about low taxes because <laughs> what are we missing out on? I said, I'm not bragging. I'm saying we've got room to move up. Oh, no. And, and still be competitive. Uh, and, and being a business owner and building owners, thank you. Yes, we like to see that. Yes, and, awesome. we like, and we like to see business owners and, and property owners continue to invest and increase that market value. Absolutely. You also talked about beautification, and they were showing a couple, you were showing, and, and Al was showing a couple examples of some things that were being done 25 years ago. What's happened uh, in, in concerning that? Well, and you know, it's, it's funny because we're, we're right downtown across the street, and I remember sitting in gentleman that's left town and but still has a lot of ties, Jim Hansel with Bank Midwest forever. Sure. It was down in Arizona now, but we were talking about what we could do with the corner of Blue Earth Avenue and State Street, the old Wilkin Hotel, and there was a little exhaust pro type thing there and the Gilbert Hotel and, you know, would we ever see that grow and develop? Well, Bank Midwest has moved out of downtown and they took down the old VFW building and right. that was rebuilt. Gunther's is gone, and Quick Trip and Laundromat are there. Walgreens is across there, so that entire um, corner has has changed. And if you go down the street a little bit, there used to be a Pomida building, where Brian Greger started his pharmacy, and now he, he moved sure. up to where um, the Laundromat is, and and now that's Center for Specialty Care and and Victoria yeah. Street Crossing. So, you know, if we and you could go down and look at High V, you could go out and look at the interstate. You know, there's two two hotels that are new since then. We've got the Center Creek Common subdivision, and could go on and on. But well, a and, lot of good things have happened. And I I've lived here 30 years, okay. and even I at 30 years, every time I drive down 15, I'm always amazed at the changes and how nice it looks even compared to when I moved here. Yeah, and it, you know, it can, continues to change and evolve. Um, you know, we just, we get to continue to look to what, what's the next change, what can we do to make our community landscape better and we'll continue to do that. You know, Walmarts and that whole development is out there. I said several years ago in 2008 when Walmart was built, this will be like the south end of Hutchinson someday with the two, 2008 recession that followed shortly after Walmart was built kind of helped us stall that project. But I think I'm, I'm confident it'll get going again. And I think um, over the next couple of years, we'll see some development out on the interstate. Okay, awesome. What uh, would you say, Mike, is uh, possibly the biggest surprise in your position when you started your, from when you started your position 
that you found uh, challenging or rewarding or uh, just just different than you thought it would be? Well, I think the community support overall has been great for the city and the city employees. They do a good job in everything they do on a daily basis. But I guess one thing that's that has changed for me when I moved here, Omaha, while Nebraska is a rural state and, and agriculturally based, I was from Omaha and, you know, I thought that Fairmont would want to move away from agriculture sure. and focus on the 3M type businesses and that. And what I found was our strength is really in our agriculture. Sure. It's value added ag products like you see at our ethanol plant and, and Cenex Harvest States and at Devonish Nutrition and the list goes on and on as to what we have. So my, my I guess my biggest surprise was how that's evolved and, and how it's just been a great thing for the community. Sure. As you know, 600 acres of industrial development since 19, actually 1998. CHS had 200 acres, the ethanol plant has 200 acres in Fairmont. And then if people remember back when Verison was creating the ethanol plant in Welcome, Welcome didn't have enough money to pay the option. So the city of Fairmont paid the option. And then the city of Fairmont and Martin County paid the option on that property the second time until they finally located and purchased it. And then we were reimbursed by Welcome. So 600 acres of property and over $300 million in investment in that four miles from Welcome to, to County Impressive. Road 39. Impressive. So, but I mean, it, it just is telling about what agriculture means to our area. Mike, where do you see the city going today? I see it continuing to, to grow and, and, and prosper. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now, much like in 1995, we were taking a look at the comprehensive plan. Sure. We have a committee um, put together right now and um, WSB Engineering out of, and Planning out of um, Minneapolis is helping us with that. How do we see things changing? Um, we're going to do some um, different transportation and street calming at the interchange at um, Sure, right. Blue Earth Avenue and as it turns into Lake Avenue here. Um, so what do we do with that whole Blue Earth corridor up to Highway 15? Does, you know, we always thought that that would initially kind of convert to more business and retail, but, but it hasn't. So what do we do with a need for, you know, new housing and infill is important. So we don't, we're not out in the out in the, in the cornfields, plowing in new roads, streets, water, and sewer. How do we utilize what we have along that Blue Earth Corridor that maybe just as um, Ken Kruger and Matt Tradeout did with that small apartment right. complex by um, the, the Fairmont Chamber of Commerce there, is there more of that in store for Blue Earth Avenue? So we're talking about those things. What are our needs? Um, again, we, we want to continue to provide safeties and housing we have an older elderly population so how do we um, build housing that fits those needs but we also have a younger population coming up that um, are looking for kids that are moving here with degrees they, they've been in college towns they want newer nicer apartments and how do we give them that how do we keep people here what i heard the other day was there's not enough housing for some of our Folks that want to move out of their house and have the uh, a smaller house of their own where they don't have to take care of the yard or anything. So we're losing people to New Ulm and St. James and Mankato. Obviously a big project, and uh, we want to thank you for your service. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I really have appreciated the citizens allowing me to serve them for these years. Um, it's It's been great fun. Mary and I plan to retire here or whatever the next chapter in life is, I guess. But we're not going anywhere. We love the lakes. We've got a lot of friends here. When Mary and I moved here, we'd been married five years. Uh, May 4th, we were married 29 years. And your kids grew up here? And our kids grew up here, went That's to school cool. here. Home. Yeah, one's this moved home. back, just bought his own house the other day. So things are good. Very cool. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And uh, perhaps we'll have you on again. Anytime. Thank you. Well, there you have it, another episode of Martin County on TV. And as we share with you those sponsors that made this show possible, remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.